So Test Harmony is built on top of a feature that was requested from a customer earlier in this year called Configuration Mode. And this particular customer wanted a way that they could just pass Harmony a list of tests and Harmony would run them automatically, hands off, uh, so they could just have an automation system that would run a particular suite of tests. And this is what that list of tests would look like for uh, Configuration Mode Harmony. It's run with uh, a command line. Here's an example of a command line that runs uh, test harmony. And if you don't have anything after the test name, it'll just run those tests with the default parameters. You notice I've got double slashes in front of all of the, most of the tests in this case. The double slash comments out the test. So if you wanted to just run a subset of your tests, you could comment out the ones that you don't want to run. So this was conformance mode. Now what we've done with parameterized options with test harmony is added the ability to add parameters after the test name. So in this case where I have these four, five tests uh, uncommented in the same five tests uncommented, I've got a set of parameters passed into that test. Now those parameters are kind of cryptic in the text file, but we are providing a document will explain each of the parameters, default value of that parameter, and then uh, there's links so that if you want to get more explanation of the parameter, you can click on the parameter and it'll go up to table, the configuration table, and tell you what each of those parameters, uh, the limits are and, and uh, what the ranges are for each of the parameters and how that parameter is defined. This is the uh, way, the format that those parameters are passed into the tests in order to run them. This gives them a very easy way to rerun tests over and over again with different parameters. So you can, in addition to putting in different parameters, you can say, I want to run the test in the default parameters first. That's what this default means first. And then I want to run it with this set of parameters in this example of this IAL test case right here that I've got highlighted. Or you can add uh, multiple sets of parameters. So for this BIS test right here, I've got it running as default. And then I've got it running with this text string data passed. And then these sets of parameters for each of the, the parameters that can be changed in the test. And then another set of parameters with a text string and a different set of parameters. So that gives them a lot of ability to test uh, the limits of, of their device in, in d any different way that they want to be able to test their device and all in an automated manner so that they can rerun this over and over again if they're trying to work out a bug, they can have that test. Right now, first I'm going to run just the default configuration harmony with just these five tests so that we don't sit here forever waiting for them to finish and without any parameters so that you can see how the old configuration mode harmony worked without parameters. And then we can run a report so you can see the two side by side. And also with test harmony, you can run with the analyzer disabled. I'm using that option right now so that the test will run a lot faster. Also, you may notice right here where it says manual. I don't know if uh, everybody's familiar with what this means. We've added this tag to each of the tests that require over-the-air validation. And over-the-air validation means that you it's required to use an analyzer, such as uh, X240, to do the full evaluation for conformance. So if an analyzer isn't attached, it'll say you still need to do some manual validation in order to have full conformance passing of this particular test. You can see my test file right here before I had default tests and here I've got just the the standard test with parameters. I'm going to run it now with those parameters. There is a summary of each of the tests and the results just as it was in the, the GUI application and then an overall test result as well down here. It says manual four pass one pass passed and overall result is passed because manual is considered a pass. Now that I've got those two run, we can go into the GUI application and uh, let me switch it over to test harmony mode first. You notice when I switch to test harmony mode, these additional custom tests showed up that are going to be available. These are only available in test harmony mode. Of course, they don't make any sense in conformance mode, so we disable them when you're in conformance mode. You can see these last two runs that I made 
in here, they look exactly the same uh, because we're just a pass-fail. That's the only information we're providing. And view the results from the summary report. Currently, um, there is no, no information of what parameters were actually run with it. That's, that's something we can look at doing in the future, but currently it's just a pass-fail result in the summary report. Look at actually the differences between the tests. Go look at the test results themselves. So if I look at first in the group that ran the default, and I looked in the, in the script log, I can see there's no indication that any parameters were used in the test. This is because we want to uh, clutter the script log when the script log is used for the default, in the default mode when they're using it for conformance. But if I go look at that same test with the parameters, you can see right here that those parameters that I passed in are listed in the script log. And then we could actually go and look at the HCI log and verify. Here's the advertising parameters. The advertising interval was set at 80, which is create connection interval is the same issue. These are intervals here. The uh, advertising interval and the connection interval is what are the parameters that were specified specifying. And in the connection interval, that value is multiplied times 1.25. I don't know why they didn't just uh, put the raw values there, but that's what they did for, uh, for the API, the HCI. That's the way the HCI command is defined by the, the uh, SIG. So 40 times 1.25 would give you 50 as well. So we've just verified that those parameters were actually passed in and used when this test uh, was run this time. We could do the same thing back on the default and see that the, used a different set of parameters. Um, DDI scan BV25 is an infamous test that if you use all the default parameters can take 45 to minutes to an hour to run just that one test. Um, with this test I gave the ability to zero in on just the particular part of the test that is failing. The reason the test takes so long is, is because it tests all kinds of values of uh, different sizes of data being sent over uh, advertising sets. And uh, typically when the data size gets a lot larger, the test tends to fail because it can't get the data across in, in the time allotted. So with this, I give the ability to target a particular data size and only run that data size in this particular test so that they can try to zero in on the problem with that test and not have to wait an entire hour to run the entire test. They can just run the piece that's failing and, uh, and target a fix for that test and then run the default overnight in a regression suite. Test Harmony, we needed to be able to modify the exit file as well. So the original configuration mode harmony that we released earlier in the year didn't have the ability to modify the exit file. Now you can also modify, you can uh, pass in a different exit file every time you run the test. So you can modify parameters that way as well. It gives you even uh, additional. You notice here on this first test, the default is uh, for connection interval is, is 10 milliseconds uh, for min and max. The advertising interval just uses the exit. So whatever is defined in your exit, that's what it's going to use for the default. And that would where that's where the exit file would come in. It's a robustness tool is one thing. Uh, it's a, a limit tester. Um, also with the custom tests, this BIS test is also has the uh, number of rounds parameter. So it's a robustness thing, but it just makes and breaks connections uh, well, this isn't connected, but makes and breaks, disconnects, and does it over and over again. So it's a good robustness tool for BIS. We were having a problem with our own tester devices. The reason I wrote this test, I wanted to validate that we had fixed the problem. So I wrote this test in order to be able to do that. There isn't a conformance test that actually does this. You would have had to run the same test over and over again to uh, get the same results. And you wouldn't have the ability to change each of these parameters when you ran that test.